Hey everyone, welcome back to the Getabury channel. So we're in our brewery, it's windy outside, so if you hear the shutter going in the background there, you can understand what we're dealing with. So today we're gonna to look at hop creep, uh, what it is, how it occurs, and how to prevent it happening. So very simply, hop creep is when a beer uh, aggressively or over ferments during the dry hopping process. So you'll hear the term over attenuation. Over attenuation is when the percentage of sugars are turned into alcohol more than what you aim for whenever you design the recipe. So that's, that's it, as simply as I can put it. Another way of describing it would be where you get off flavor compounds in your finished beer as a result of hop creep. So if you've ever had a buttery or sort of a butterscotch popcorn type aroma coming off your beer following dry hopping, you could understand that that's, it's obviously, you know, diacetyl would have an issue in that, but it's a reaction that occurs between the yeast and the hops and the compounds that are within the hops that are in that beer. So whenever you're dry hopping, the contact time that you have the hops in the fermenter, the quantity of the hops, the variety of the hops, all these variables are gonna have effect on the outcome of the finished beer and can have an effect on hop creep. So one tip that I wanna start with is um, just documentation. So um, are you checking your gravity, your pH, are you checking for um, diacetyl VDK checks? Are you, are you monitoring the process to allow you to identify if there is an issue? And that's one thing that I, I would recommend that you do is really good documentation in relation to your uh, brewing processes so you can identify this if it occurs. When, when you're thinking, have you got an issue with hop creep? Um, I'm sure we've all had a commercial beer that we've had from a local brewery that's had it, or we've brewed a homebrew batch that's had it um, in a very subtle way, or again, in a, in a very enhanced and, and prominent way. I guess if you're monitoring the variables really, really closely from a professional brewing point of view, that it helps you, you know, if you're really accurately checking your gravity and your pH, you're doing forced acetyl tests, um, perhaps you want to consider ways of avoiding it. Maybe you want to put more hops in the whirlpool um, to get that hop flavor through in the brewing process rather than the hops in the dry hopping stage. Contact time that I've touched on there as well, you know, obviously the more increased contact time, the more chance you have of hop creep kicking in. There is um, procedures that you could consider to try and avoid it. Um, ALDC is a product that we have from um, Murphy and & Son and it's, it basically helps eliminate diacetyl and that off flavor often associated with hop creep. So just a little tip that perhaps you want to consider introducing that to your process, but again, putting a real focus on monitoring the variable so that you can identify it and resolve it as and when it becomes an issue for you. So the second uh, point that I would make in relation to this is use fresh hops and um, use them from a trusted source. So we have invested a lot of time and effort here into making sure that we provide super premium quality hops with full traceability. We've got good cold chain. If we have to repack them, we repack them professionally in a food safe environment and you know, nitrogen flush them. They're mylar environment proof packages. All our hop bags are resealable. So um, using fresh hops is obviously going to eliminate the issues um, to a certain amount as well. Different hops have been proven um, that have a, a higher potential to cause hop creep or other, other than other varieties. We've some further information on this on the Get A Brew blog. If you want to read about it, uh, we'll pop the link in the description below. The reason we're, we're doing this is obviously to direct you to further information and resources that we have over in the Get A Brew blog. So check it out on the website and you can read more about it there. So you'll, you'll read on the Get A Brew blog that we talk about uh, being consistent with your processes and documentation and the reason that you do that is that it allows you to identify um, where these um, variables have an impact to allow you to adjust them. So um, we've touched on some of the points in relation to dry hop and time, contact time. Um, we know that there's um, amyloptic enzymes, probably said that wrong, but in the hops that they, they basically convert um, dextrins into fermentable sugars and it changes the ABV of the beer that you want, it changes the flavor in the beer. Um, so if you're, if you're watching your processes, you're able 
to identify, um, you know, consistency and how to consistently make good quality beer and adjust the variables. So it could be as simple as um, the yeast count at that time, the amount of hops that you're using. So if you've got a good amount of healthy yeast, a good amount of hops, perhaps you need to consider the quantities of those and the impact that that would have on the finished beer. And whenever it comes to it for, for ourselves here, we do a lot of dry hopping uh, during active fermentation. So say we're six points off final gravity, we, we tend to close the valves off in the cylindrical conical pressurized tanks and allow a bit of a biotransformation to take place with the yeast and the hops. And what that tends to do is punch through that more fruit forward flavor. Whereas if we do it at uh, different temperatures and post fermentation, we find that we personally get a little bit more of a grassier finish in the dry hopping process, but temperature again is something that you want to be, you know, paying attention to. So be interested to hear uh, what experiences you've had with playing with temperature um, and the time at which that you add your dry hops and the duration. So hopefully we've covered this really briefly to direct you to the Get A Brew blog, and we look forward to hearing your feedback on the experiences you've had overcoming this issue. So thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy day.